hello everyone welcome to today's video and in today's video we are going to discuss about pre-signed urls followed by a quick lab session so by default all objects as known are private by the bucket setting meaning only bucket account owner initially has access to the object if you want a user to have or access to a specific bucket or an object without making them public you can provide the user with the appropriate permissions using the IAM policy. But in addition to allowing access using an IAM policy, you can also create a pre-signed URL, meaning users can interact with the object without the need for AWS credentials or IAM permissions to be defined for that particular user. So in a broader context, if you look at it, it is something like providing a temporary access to this user via a URL. So what does a pre-signed URL actually looks like? So this is how the URL looks like and the construct is composed of these parameter. So when you create a pre-signed URL, there are three key parameters that you would require. The number one, is a bucket name, a object key, or the S3 URI that you uh, look into the your object configuration when you look at. Then the third most important thing is the expiration date and time. So with these three parameters, using a AWS CLI or SDK or AWS Explorer, your application can generate the pre-signed URL for a specified object. So let's move on and let's take an example of an ebook store to understand the concept in more detail. So here I have a client or a user which is trying to access an ebook application and then I have a S3 storage service which I am using to store all the ebooks. So this bucket by its default property is private and then I have a SDK which my application uses to interface with the S3 API or the web services. So by default if the client is given the S3 URL object URL because the object is private the client or the user will get access denied uh, problem uh, issue every time he tries to access this uh, object. So the workaround there lies with the pre-signed URL. So let's see how it works. So the client requests the application. The application in turn connects to the SDK and sends a request via the SDK to the AWS S3 API and then the API further processes the request parameters to generate a signed URL for the specified object and returns it back to the SDK and the SDK in return turns it back to the ebook application and that's how the end user has the access to the specified object. So this is just an example of a CLI command to generate the pre-signed URL. So as you can see in the parameters, the S3 URI or the object key has been provided. And the second thing that has been provided here is the expiry time. So this, once this signed URL for the object is generated, this object uh, URL would be active only for 30 seconds post that it will expire. The key thing to remember here is that suppose you are dealing with a very big file for example if it is uh, say 1 GB uh, or so in size and then it takes quite some time for the download to happen if in that case I am defining 30 second and within that 30 second if you have initiated the download it would not mean that once that 30 second is over that your URL will expire and your download will get interrupted. So in that 30 
second time frame if you have initiated the download the download will go through successfully even if the url has expired but after the download if you retry then it's not going to happen okay moving on this is a quick function reference for the sdk but let's not focus on this for now as i will be using the cli for the first part of the demonstration so in the first part we are going to attempt a get object operation using a aws cli okay so let's identify the steps involved in the first part of the exercise so we will be creating a bucket and then we'll be uh, checking for uh, the properties of that particular bucket to have have private access then the next part would involve uploading an object and then verifying the public access that shouldn't be working and then we'll create a IAM user with programmatic access. That means that it will generate a access keys for this particular user. And then we'll define the policies required for the S3 operations for this particular user. The next part will configure the user credentials that we have created just now on AWS CLI. And then we will use the aws cli commands to test the policies and permission properly applied on that particular user in the next step we will fetch the object s3 uri and we'll use the aws cli command to generate the pre-signed url for the object and then in the final step we will test the pre-signed url for the expiry time the step 12 and 13 wherein we'll create the lambda function which to connect to the sdk and uh, generate the urls for the application those two steps 12 and 13 we'll see in the next uh, video in the same series okay let's move on to see one step 1 to 11 in action let's start with the step 1 to create s3 bucket let's go to s3 services Once inside, click on create bucket and then provide whatever name you want to provide for your bucket. Once done, click on create bucket and there it is. So for second step is we'll look at the permission setting. So as you can see here, the permission is set to block public access. That means the bucket is private. So we have verified second step. Now going back to step three. So step three would involve uploading a object to this particular bucket. So we will upload the file to the bucket and here is our object. Click on the object to check for the object URI but first we will check the permissions properly applied. So as you can see here the bucket object is uh, not accessible hence the object is uh, all the permissions are properly applied. Now we will go to creating the IAM user and we will click on users to create a new user. So click on users, click on add users. And then follow, um, provide a username. And then we just need a programmatic access for this particular user. And then we will assign the policies. So for this uh, tutorial, I'm just going to add uh, S3 full access and uh, we'll just provide some tags next you click on the create user and once you have done creating it you will get an option to download the credentials just keep download and keep this credential safe with you because this is only provided one time okay now that the iam user is created we'll move on to the next step for that just open up the terminal and first ensure whether aws cli is installed on your system or not and for that you can simply type aws hyphen hyphen version to check on the aws cli version so if it is not returning you anything then you can assume that aws is not installed on your system and if you want to look out for the instructions to install aws cli on your system you can check out for the link given in the description below Moving on to the next step, we have to configure the credentials for the user tech hub uh, for this particular CLI. So what we will do is that first let us have the credentials handy with us that we downloaded earlier. So we have to configure the access key and the secret for the CLI. So I'll just copy the access key and keep it handy. And then I need to issue the command AWS 
configure and if i press enter right now away it will create or overwrite the default profile so what i will do is that i will create a separate profile for this user in name tech hub so this is not necessary you can even if you just uh, go ahead with aws configure and you enter it will just uh, create a default profile but just to be on the safer side uh, and specify both the options i am just pro creating it with uh, tech hub profile name and i will paste the copied access key and then i'm prompted for uh, sorry access key id and then the secret key so now i will provide the secret key then i need to specify the region for me the region is ap south 1 and json is the default format now having done this my user is configured for the cli and using the cli now i will first ensure whether the policies and permissions that i have applied on this user for accessing the as3 resources is working fine or not and for that i'll just issue a very simple command that is aws s3 ls to list all the buckets that is there in my account or that is accessible to the user tech hub as you can see here it is returning the s3 bucket name tech hub bookstore we'll go back to verify whether we have only this bucket created in our s3 dashboard so let's go back to s3 and check out for how many buckets we have there and as you can see here only one bucket so this ensures that the policies applied on the user are working fine the aws is also aws cli is also configured and working fine and then now from here we can move to the next step which is the final step in this verification process or uh, to generate the pre-signed url for the object that we earlier created inside of this particular bucket so let's go inside the bucket let's so this is the object that we had earlier created we'll just click on this object to fetch the s3 uri which we'll need for creating the pre-signed url so once copied let's come back again i have to issue command aws s3 now pre-sign is the main command that i have to pass to generate the pre-signed url and in the arguments i have to pass the uri of the object that i for which i want the access uh, uh, pre-signed url generated and the last argument that i i will provide is hyphen hyphen sorry express in and i'll specify 60 seconds for the lab because i also have to verify and show you whether this url is expiring in the destined time or not so by using this command i'll just generate the url and i will also start the stop clock to ensure that 60 seconds is done so i'll just copy this uri i'll put it in the browser and hit enter and as you can see that this is opening up the pdf so it's loading up so here is the pdf so let's have a check on the stop clock so once the 60 second is done we will refresh this url to check whether the url is still valid or not and the expected behavior on this url or the the pre-signed url is that since we generated it with 60 second expiry time it should actually give a permission denied error after 60 seconds have elapsed so we are we are almost there let it go past 60 and then we will try to refresh okay so now that 60 seconds are done we'll just refresh and you can see that we are getting an access denied okay so with this we conclude the demonstration of creating pre-signed url and its working using aws cli in next part of the video we are going to perform the same action using a lambda function so please stay tuned for the next video thanks for watching